Alrighty, so well, we will get the first of the seven game action that's going to be happening on Saturday starting until 7.30 p.m. Eastern, 4.30 p.m. Pacific. It's a perfect time for me to do the preview in terms of tomorrow game. And I think tomorrow, you know, it is the, the final day where we get the Heineken rivalry match week where throughout these two weeks we see some of the biggest rivalry happening in MLS. But you know the old saying, it's best to say for last? Well, that's the case for Sunday because there is pretty much all the rivalry games that's going to be happening on Sunday out of the, the big ones that's that's happening in terms of match week number 21. And we start off with the first one between Atlanta United versus Orlando City, also known as the original Southeast Derby because, you know, these two teams were the first two Southeast team that is based in MLS. But this game will start at 3 p.m. Eastern, uh, 12 p.m. Pacific, but the actual kickoff is 3.08 p.m. local time. And this game is going to be on 8 BC. Now, Orlando coming into this game with a 6-5-8 record, and Orlando coming into this game with an 8-5-7 record. In terms of the all-time meeting, yeah, safe to say that Atlanta has dominated the, the meeting, and there's a reason why uh, Joseph Martinez have repeatedly troll or Orlando or saying that basically Atlanta owns them, because, yeah, for a while, Atlanta did, did own Orlando, but when you look at the last five head-to-head -head matchups, it has been a little bit bit closer um you know Orlando did win the last meeting three nothing against Orlando but Orlando did win at home three two against Atlanta United there was a new new draw between both of these teams before Orlando got their biggest victory margin against Atlanta by winning four one and then it was another new no draw between them and Atlanta United in fact Orlando City have only won once uh at Mercedes-Benz Stadium against Atlanta United so theoretically you would think Atlanta is going to be be heavy favorites and that Again, after a much-needed win against RSL in the last home game, you would think that they, they should have the momentum coming into this game. And also for Orlando, you know, knowing the fact that they just came off of a draw against Colorado and going with the Orlando City inconsistent theorem that this season, that means they're due for, for a loss in this one. Or they're due for a win in, in this one at the same time to continue to, to, to continue the misery for Orlando City fans of just... Not knowing what kind of Orlando team to, to figure out. Like, Orlando is probably one of the most predictable, but also the most unpredictable team to, to see play this season. And the predictable thing is that we know that how, how some of these resort is going to be because of the inconsistent form and the pattern that they have. But also unpredictable because there could be times where they could be playing very good. And then there could be times that they look like one of the worst teams in the league. And sometimes it can happen at, at all in one game. So, yeah, we'll, we'll see how... How they will do in this one, and again, you know they're going to be up, up for it at any time when they, of course, play against their hated rival that is Atlanta United. But now moving on in the next match, we got the Hudson River Derby between the New York Red Bulls and NYCFC. As this game will start at 5 p.m. Eastern, 2 p.m. Pacific, but the actual kickoff is 5:08 p.m. local time, and this one is going to be on ESPN following right after the Atlanta versus Orlando City match. Uh, in terms of the all-time. Meeting it's 13 3 and 6 in favor of NYCFC, and for a while, uh, the Red Bulls actually have dominated the, this series. But you know, NYCFC have made it a little bit closer in terms of the last five head to head meeting. And by the way, this is not the first time that both of these teams have met each other this season. Uh, we know they met each other in the U.S. Open Cup, and yeah, that thing got got ugly in ter terms of how there was definitely some ten some some cheapiness in this game, and there was like three red cards out. That was awarded in this one. And I always love whenever there's like a rivalry like that. I feel like nowadays with some of these rivalry, it kind of has lost that 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 bitter edge. I mean, obviously, I don't want to see, see you know, players, of course, getting sent off and stuff. But I feel like in a rivalry game, you need to have that kind of hatred back into these players. You know, we know the fans are definitely have that hatred and have always talked talk, uh, trash in terms of other other team and their hated rival. But we don't see that at, at times on the the pitch as much as I feel like it, it used to be a couple of years ago but you know in the last game it definitely was shown I mean you can definitely see both of these teams do not like against each other but yeah uh, the Red Bulls were able to win three nothing in that one before winning one nothing against NYCFC then winning one nothing on the road against NYCFC so they have kept NYCFC at bay at least in these last three game in terms of scoring then it was a 1-1 draw between both of these teams and then NYCFC win 5-2 against the New York Red Bulls and in, in their biggest margin of victory over the New York Red Bulls so yeah this should be an, another interesting kind of matchup and especially 
with the way that you know the Red Bulls lately they have catch fire at home and that they've now won three in a row coming into this one and in, in second place in the standings or actually not in second but I think they're they're right now in third in the standing either way both of these teams are either in second and third and NYCFC you know they started to kind of ride the ship a little bit you know it took a while for them to find finally give their interim head coach Nick Cushion his first ever win and after that happened they got another win against FC Dallas in a game where while they did not play well by any means of imagination they still got a win at the end of the day and when you can get a, get a win no matter how how it is on the road it's definitely a big bonus and they're gonna have to try to do it again especially with the way that they know that they want to break the duck in terms of not able to score against the Red Bulls with the way as I mentioned, it's been almost 300 plus minutes since last time NYCFC was able to put a goal past their hated rival, that is the New York Red Bulls. Now, uh, moving on to the next match, from the Hudson River Derby to the Hell is Real Derby between the Columbus Crew versus FC Cincinnati, as this game will start at 7.30 p.m. Eastern, 4.30 p.m. Pacific, but the actual kickoff is 7.55 p.m. local time, as this one is going to be on FS1. Uh, the Crew has a 6, 8, and 5 record. Well, FC Cincinnati have a 7-6-7 seven, and seven record. And this is kind of also a matchup that could be kind of like a playoff six-pointer in a way where Cincinnati is just above the red line. While Columbus is below the red line, but Columbus does have a game in hand over Cincinnati. So, you know, not only the fact that this is going to be a rivalry between two teams that hate each other, but also it could be a rivalry in terms of the standings too. Where, you know, if you add into that, that as an extra element, you know it's going to get extra spicy. But in terms of the all-time meeting, you know, like what I said about the Hudson River Derby, it has even out a little bit after Columbus kind of dominated this rivalry for the first couple of games. It's now at 4-3 and 2 in favor of them. Uh, last five head-to-head meeting, it was a 3-2 win that Columbus had against Cincinnati before it was a 2-2 draw between both of these teams. A 2-1 win that Cincinnati had against Columbus. A 3-0 win that Columbus had against Cincinnati. And then it was a 0-0 draw between both uh, uh, of the these Ohio uh, team so yeah it should be very interesting to see how the latest uh, installment of the hell is real derby is going to be and especially there's always some some crazy thing that could happen in this and that there's games where it could be very hot high scoring and stuff this could could be the case again especially with the way that you know Cincinnati has been one of the highest goal scoring team this season and then Columbus you know while they have struggled to score score goals this season might have found their their new number nine in Cucho Hernandez, who you know he he definitely wants to make an impression in this game. He's already scored three goals in his first two games, and don't be surprised he could be scoring again in in probably the biggest game of the season for the Columbus Crew and definitely for FC Cincinnati too. Now uh, moving on in terms of the next match is Nashville versus LAFC. Now this is probably the only matchup out of the seven that I'm gonna talk about that isn't really kind of. A rivalry and I couldn't really come up with a name of this derby so I'm gonna guess this is the first ever meeting derby because this is the first time that both of these teams have ever met against each other Nashville has an 8-6-6 six, and six record and don't look now but they are rising up the standings like they're all the way up to third place in the standings and that's how crazy the West is right now and how tight the West is right now where you can definitely get yourself as high as third place because of how congested between third all the way down to ninth place. And Nashville has taken advantage of winning these last couple of games while their their opposition have been dropping points or losing in game to lose ground. While for LAFC, you know they they did did uh de got the throne in terms of the supporter shield stand stand or the supporter shield sh shield uh summit with the way that Austin FC uh, are are just winning games left. And right, and that they have now have a record of 12, 3, and 4. Now, this game will start at 8.30 p.m. Eastern, 5.30 p.m. Pacific, but the actual kickoff is 7.38 p.m. local time. And again, you know, for Nashville, after finally getting a big home home win of what it feels like it's been for a while since they have been able to win at home, they're going to go at it again, and especially against an LAFC team that you know they want to get themselves back uh, atop of the supporter shield standing. Well, actually, we'll see if that's going to be the case because if Austin does get a win against FC Dallas, then it's now going to be a four-point four, four point gap that LEFC is have to chase. And this just kind of show, shows you this season where, you know, in terms of the standings-wise, it's not like what we saw last season where there was like one team basically dominate the rest of the league and are head and shoulder above the rest of the league. That is the New England Revolution. There could be a fight between LAFC and Austin in terms of that supporter shield standing. And don't also count out the Eastern Conference too. I mean, the Union is not that far away from the supporter shield standings. And they're in in the, the Eastern Conference right now. 
Uh, but now moving on in the next match, we got RSL versus Sporting KC, which will start at 9.30 p.m. Eastern, 6.30 p.m. Pacific. Actually, let me let, phrase uh, what I said about New England being the Eastern Conference. They've always been the uh, in the Eastern Conference, but what I'm trying to uh, say is that, you know, people have, have talked about how the Eastern Conference, once again, is not as strong as it is in the West, and especially the points total. It feels like, like the you need more points, maybe make it to the playoffs in, in the West compared to where you are in the East, and there could be that scenario where there could be teams in the West that miss out that could be in the playoffs if they were in the Eastern Conference. But now moving to this one between RSL versus Sporting KC, and I would like to say that this is kind of a rivalry between two teams that, you know, are not ge geographically aligned. I mean, usually when you have a rivalry, especially nowadays in MLS, it's usually geographically based, but that's not the case in this one. And I think this rivalry kind of all started back in that 2013 MLS Cup when football so the team face off against each other, and ever since that, yeah, there's been been not non-stop bickering between both fan base and that. You gotta say, you know, if you're a, an RSL fan, as much as I know Colorado would would make sense geographically as their main rival, many RSL fans will say Sporting KC, and Sporting KC will say the same thing. I mean, as much as Houston might be the one geographically, and then next season it's gonna be St. St. Louis, and I have a feeling the league is gonna force that ri rivalry like it ha has been with all these new expansion teams sporting kc fans will all say rsl is their most hated team and they and we get to see both of these teams play against each other again uh as as this game will start at 9 30 p.m eastern 6 30 p.m pacific but the actual kickoff is 7 38 p.m local time rsl have an 8 6 and 6 record while sporting kc have a 5 5 and 11 record in terms of the all-time meeting um it's actually deadlocked at 16 win apiece and nine draw between both of these teams so it just tells you how closely contested this this head-to-head -head battle has been but in terms of the last five head-to-head -head meeting you know earlier this season it was a one nothing win that sporting KC had against rsl despite the fact that rsl were the better team in that game but they just couldn't finish and then in the playoffs they of course of course uh rsl of course pull out a shocker by winning 2-1 against sporting KC, and then they won one nothing on the the road in an unforgettable decision day game that kind of got rsl to, to be in the playoffs but before that it was a 3-1 win that rsl had against sporting kc and then it was a 2-0 road win that sporting kc has against rsl and you know don't look now but sporting kc has started to get themselves on a, a road in these la last couple of games i mean you know you know they it, most of the success at least in these last couple of games has been come on on the road and that you know I know it's still a long way for them to be a playoff contender because they dug themselves in such a deep hole in the beginning of the season. But if they they can continue to do round and form and you know kind of start look like the sporting KC of old, this team can kind of came out of nowhere and all of a sudden could be in the playoff race. Whereas for RSL, their form has been kind of the opposite of sporting KC. It has not been been good, and they're once again su suffering that that slump that they kind of suffer. Uh, back in in May when you know how they, they got off to such a great start to the season and then they kind of came back down to real reality between April and May and then they got themselves into to a decent run to continue that form and now it feels like they're they're back in in the low, lower level but if there is a way to for them to get themselves back into good form this is definitely a game for them to to get a win to really propel themselves once again up in the standings because I think now they drop as as low low as uh, i think they're in, in sixth place right now in the standings or is it no i think they're they're in fourth place i need to look at the 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 standings again i mean it, it's very con congested right now in the west especially in the middle of the table but there's no doubt that rsl is definitely facing a bit of a mini slump with them having got a win in in a while while now and it was uh, it was was basically seen in the last game too with them unable to win against atlanta united on the road but now moving on in the next match, we got the San Jose Earthquakes versus the Houston Dynamo. And I would say this is kind of the Heritage Classic or the Heritage Derby because, you know, we know no Earthquakes and we know how Houston, of course, w was formed. And it's not because of the fact that the league decided to give Houston then a, a team back in two, 2005. And we will also not, not, not forget and still maybe a little bit pissed off the fact that those two MLS Cup that Houston, of course, won probably should have belonged. Long to the quakes back in 2006 and 7 but that being said both of these teams are facing off against each other again as this one will also start at 9 30 p.m eastern 6 30 p.m pacific 
but the actual kickoff is 6.38 p.m. local time. Uh, the Quakes have a 5-7-7 seven, and seven record, while Houston has a 6-4-10 and 10 record. Uh, in terms of the all-time meeting, it's a 15-4-9 and nine favor in favor of the Quakes. But lately, the Quakes have been very good against the Houston Dynamo uh, at home. Well, I mean, it's kind of expected because the Dynamo does suck on the the road but in the last head-to-head -head meeting it was a, a barn burner seven goal affair where the dynamo were able to edge out the quakes by a score of four goals to three there was a 1-1 draw between both of these teams before the dynamo did win 2-1 against the quakes the quakes did win 2 nothing against houston and then houston of course winning 2-1 against the quakes and again a lot of the, the the success that the dynamo has had at least in these last five head-to-head -head meeting has been at home but the bad news is this is not at home this is going to be at, at paypal park and you know the quakes would want to ha have some revenge and especially after that big cali Clasico win where they finally get that 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 uh road win off their their shoulder they're looking to try to build on that momentum against a houston team that you know they're they're starting to kind of head head the wrong wrong direction at least in these last couple of games but now moving on in the next match, we got the Portland Timbers versus the Vancouver Whitecaps, also known as the Forgotten Cascadia Derby. Well, it's really the, the Forgotten Cascadia Derby anytime when Vancouver plays either the Timbers or the Sounders. But in this case, I would also say this is kind of like the former land, landlord derby because, you know, for a while Vancouver during the COVID era was using using uh, Providence Park as their home stadium before, you know, the very next year they moved to Rio Tinto Stadium. But in terms of this game, 10.30 p.m. Eastern, 7.30 p.m. Pacific, but the actual kickoff is 7.38 p.m. local time. Uh, the Timbers th does have, have the edge in terms of this former landlord derby with a 16-7-9 record over the Whitecaps. But in terms of the last five head-to-head -head matchup, it was the Timbers winning 3-2 against the Whitecaps before the Whitecaps returned that favor by winning 3-2 on the road against the Timbers. The Timbers then win one nothing against the Whitecaps before the Whitecaps return the favorite by winning one nothing against the Timbers. And then the Timbers return the favorite by winning one nothing against the Vancouver Whitecaps. So something tells me maybe the the Timbers are going to or the Whitecaps are going to return the favorite by winning 3-2 because you see the pattern in the last five head to head matchup. But either way, you know this is a game for for the Timbers. You can definitely see that they, they are heading on an upward projectile with the way that after they get that that big cascadia derby you would expect that they should be going on a run because that's how how the cascadia derby works where the winner of that not only get bragging rights but their season usually could tur turn into a good one and that's what we're at least seeing for the timbers in the last couple of games have now all of a sudden got themselves back in the playoff contention race well for the white caps yeah you know they have struggled in these last couple of games but they did get Get a big, big roll point against FC Cincinnati in a game where it didn't look like they were going to get anything out of it. But you know they they know that they they need to to get more roll points if they they want to to continue you to to be in the playoff conversation. Because as good as they are at home, they need to also get some some roll points and roll wins. And so far they have done done so, but they also have dropped some some points at home. So you know the way to make up for drop points on. Uh, at home is that they need to make make that up by getting some points on the road and we'll see whether or not if they can do it against a resurgent Portland Timbers side but there you have it that is pretty much it in terms of looking at these seven games that's going to happen tomorrow like I said you know these seven games should be be full of headlines and if there's something similar to what we saw last week where it feels like last week Saturday was the, the day where all the the rivalry game happened and basically it ended up to be be the best uh, day that I think we have seen so far this season in MLS and really probably in these last couple of year two, something tells me this could be, be the case again and that don't be surprised by the end of the week or when I do do the review of these game on Monday it could be a long review talk about some very interesting storyline out of all of these rivalry game but until then let me know in the comments below what do you think of this video and also make your prediction of these seven games that's going to be happening on sunday but yeah hope you guys enjoyed this video if you do make sure you like smash the subscribe button and yeah i of course will see you guys next time